Welcome to my Unity workshop. My name is Serkis and I'm a computer science student at Terry Watt. My workshop is going to be about a platformer game in Unity. It's, I'm going to have a bit of technical stuff, more game dev stuff, design stuff. I uh, hope you'll enjoy it. Starting off, uh, I'm going to show a small a bit, a bit of my game, or the entire game actually. <coughs> It's a platform game, side scrolling, with jumping, platforms, basic stuff. I'll get in depth into the game design choices and the controls. For now, just enjoy and watch the game. So that's about it for the demo. I'd like to get into the technical stuff of Unity. Uh, first of all, any platformer needs movement and jump. How, uh, otherwise, you can't get past the platforms. Uh, most platformers have this sa the satisfactory uh, mechanic where if you hold on a button long enough, hold on the jump button long enough, you get to float a little more. So there's like a short jump, which is this and the longer jump, which is holding down the button, like this. Because remember, like, remember when you used to hold down buttons hard enough and thinking it will change something? Yes, it does, actually. The jump, usually in platformers. Second of all, uh, another m mechanic in platformers is the Kyoti time. Kyoti time is when you fall off a platform, you're given a small leeway to jump off that platform. So you're not punished too hard for walking off the platform accidentally when you want to jump at the last moment. You can pay close attention, player falls down, and you jump. Third mechanic is the jump buffering. Jumping is jumping happens the moment when you press the key. And if you hold down the key, it doesn't jump again. So what do you do if you want to constantly jump? What jump buffering does is that when you press the jump button mid-air, it buffers it. And the moment you land, you jump again. By the way, all of this is available on the GitHub, the code, and you can, you can play a build. That's, that's also on the GitHub. So you don't need Unity to run all this. And lastly, we have the we have the direction change mechanic, where usually when you jump, this is a physics-based game, so it uses physics, so when you want to change directions, you'll be applying forces, so you'll be wasting time deaccelerating instead of changing directions. So what this mechanic allows you to do is immediately change directions mid-air. Th there is no reason for this in this game currently, but most platformers do it, and it's usually gives player more control midair and makes it makes the game easier and more satisfying. Now time to get into the Unity technical stuff. You, everything in Unity is a game object. The player is a game object. The the tiles are game objects. The barrels are and the characters. So let's get into what what the game object does. Every single game object has transform. Transforms are basically your position, rotation, and scale. Position, in this case, since it's a 2D game, we, we can only work in two axes, the X and the Y axis. Z is limited to 3D, so we can use the Z axis. But that's only 3D. Rotation, since this is a 2D game, we can only rotate in one axis, which is the z-axis. And lastly, scale. Scale is basically the size. Again, 2D, only two axes. 
and then there is this thing called components where you can add them on objects the player object has three components one of which is written by me and two of which are provided by unity let's talk about rigid body 2d rigid body 2d is basically the physics component of the objects uh, which allows you to add force change the object's mass change the gravity scale the dra linear drag angular drag all these physics terms uh, you can do that through code like adding force or changing it middle of the game we'll, I'll get into how it's used and second of all is the box collider which is the collision as you can see here the, the square or rectangle here you can change the size the offset and the edge radius to make smoother than out so about the third component the player controller which is written by me it's written in a script using the language C sharp let's take a look at it the, here this is the player controller script I know it's code it's hard to look at painful to look at but bear with me for these stuff or just variables boring stuff we can ignore them let's get to the interesting stuff how the jump works here's the jump function jump function is function since I assume most of you here watching uh, don't know much programming I'll I'll skip through the details and tell you the fun part okay function is basically doing something and in this case what it's doing is that the physics component sets your velocity y velocity to zero and then adds force to it so you can go upwards let's take a look at it in game see it's adding force upwards it's just that simple let's go back to the code and let's go let's, let's take a look at this this is the this is the satisfactory or the the jump like oh, what was it long jump and short jump yes so here um, so the jump is called here if the player is on ground or has the Kyoto time jump is called but when the player is mid-air if the player's velocity is greater greater than zero then we can uh, set the gravity scale to lower meaning that the player will jump even higher and float a bit more if we don't it's going to be normal normal jump and when the player is falling we increase it more why because players use players like to have control when they're jumping but when they're falling down they want to fall down as soon as possible so it doesn't feel too floaty so this is the Bose script much shorter because all it does is that it creates a game object a new arrow instantiate arrow at the attack position and then we get the rigid body component of it ourselves and then we add force to it based on the angle we're aiming at yes bow is spirit to the sword so um, I'll demonstrate the bow quickly I'll get I'll cheat a bit and give the player a sword oh, or not a sword a database bow look whenever I press the button it creates the object and adds force to it and it's based on the direction I'm aiming so I can aim upwards to the side or aim downwards and it's instantiated on that dot or created basically and then the arrow itself has has a script so let's take a look at the arrow the arrow itself um, this is the player projectile here uh, we can we have different variables for it for the arrow we can change its center of mass damage it does etc 
but here is the same basically essentially the same thing as the sword it scans for all the enemy it doesn't scan for all the enemies and since it's an object we check for collision all the all the things are pretty similar they're all they all work in a similar fashion and they're very simple so basically the sword is basically a bowie that you can create an object and then we get to the wand uh, do you need unity to play it uh, no uh, to play it you just download the the release to actually edit the code and take a look at the scenes or edit the scene you need unity so I guess this concludes the workshop I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new um, I guess see you guys later